Hi friends, welcome to the third workshop in our family literacy series, My Child the Writer. If this is your first time joining us, we want you to know that you will receive information for our previous workshops as a follow-up to this training. Also, if you are new to Footsteps to Brilliance and haven't used it with your children at home, we will go through the simple steps to get started at the end of this workshop. In today's workshop, we are going to cover four topics, the stages of writing, tips for making writing fun with Footsteps to Brilliance. We'll go over some questions and answers that commonly are asked, and we will go over registration help for new families. Writing, drawing, and creating is an important part of building a strong reading foundation for our children. Writing allows children to express themselves and show their individuality. Just like reading, becoming a good writer starts early and develops in stages. Today, we are going to share fun ways to support the writing development of your children. What you see here are examples of what writing looks like at the various stages of your child's development. For children learning a new language, writing is a great way for them to try to use the words they are learning to create a drawing or write a story. Beginning at about 18 months, children can begin the exploration of making marks on paper, and then it grows from there. It may take five years or more for children to progress through these stages. When working with infants less than 18 months, focus on speaking, singing, dancing, and explaining the world around them. Read books aloud, sing songs, especially nursery rhymes, and traditional Spanish songbooks. Writing will come in later. Images one and two on the screen may represent a child that is two to three years old. Children begin to develop fine motor skills, which is the ability to work with their hands and hold writing tools. Children will make random scribbles and marks. Drawing, which is scribbles and pictures at this age, represent writing. Images three and four may represent a child that is three to four years old. Children will have more of a controlled scribble. They will be trying to copy what they see as words or images from the world around them. They are trying to replicate familiar prints such as signs, alphabet letters, their name, or pictures they see in books. Marks or scribbles that the children attend to make are intended to be letters. Wavy scribbles are imitating cursive writing, and generally you'll notice that they will do this left to right. The child pretends to write words with letter-like shapes. Images five and six may represent a child that is four to five years old. Children here will write strings of letters that do not create words, and they will use a mix of upper and lowercase letters and not use spaces between words. They will, however, go left to right. Children may also begin to leave spaces in between the letters to resemble words. Images seven, eight, and nine may represent a child that is kindergarten to second grade. Here, they may begin to use inventive spelling, which is where they have many letters correct, but sometimes they're missing letters. Letters may even be backwards and will be a combination of lower or uppercase. The words will usually have a beginning letter in the correct place and an ending letter in the correct place. As they progress, traditional spelling will begin to appear. They will make short phrases to express their ideas and they will have the correct use of the upper and lowercase letters. Children will eventually use correct punctuation, full sentences to express ideas, and will be able to communicate in a written form. What you do as a parent to give them practice and experience will help them become better writers. So let's look at the tools that you have available in Footsteps to Brilliance to help them in their journey. In this recording, we are presenting examples of how you can use Footsteps to Brilliance by age groups. 
you can watch the whole recording, or if you like, you can move forward to the age groups that are for your family. Don't forget to watch the tip section after the age appropriate examples where we share our tips to get the most out of our apps and how to get help and how to register so you can receive your free Footsteps to Brilliance account. Section one, toddlers, one to two-year-olds. I'd like to just remind you before we jump in that when you are working with infants, please just focus on creating a language rich environment, expose them to a lot of speaking, singing, reading aloud, and of course, having fun. You do not need to focus on using the app, but of course you can use the app if you wanna access the songbooks, the nursery rhymes, the storybooks, and have fun singing and reading aloud to your baby. Now for toddlers, these are gonna be our children that are beginning to start to understand the use of a tool such as a crayon. Footsteps to Brilliance is the best when we use it as lapware. This is where you'll sit with your child on your lap or next to your child and use Footsteps to Brilliance to read, write, and create with them. Open the digital books and read just like you would a printed book. You can stand up, do actions to the songs. You can act out our stories. We have one book called The Full Moon Parade, and this would be a perfect place to dance, to sing, to count the animals. In Topper's Toy Store, that would be so much fun to act out what happens when the toys come alive. Use the book features to listen, to speak, and record. Now to develop writing at this early stage, here are some tips we think will promote fine motor skills in your children. Provide children with large age-appropriate crayons, of course, non-toxic. Take note and watch for which hand your children hold the crayon and allow them to use that to make random scribbles and marks. Talk about the pictures they draw, point out the colors they use, point out shapes, the lines, ask them questions about their picture, and that will encourage oral language and vocabulary development. For parents who would like to use Footsteps to Brilliance as lapware, you can use the doodle pad to draw pictures as well, and you can hold your child's finger on a tablet and guide them to making their drawings. And again, don't forget parents, you can have fun as well. Let's take a look at doodle pad and see how to use that. This is the parent welcome screen. You will notice that if you have signed up to make a parent account, you will be able to have access to all children in your family that have accounts created. Now today, I'm going to go into our Footsteps to Brilliance app and I am on a computer, so I do have all three choices available. If you are playing on a mobile device, you will have each app separately. I'm gonna open up Footsteps to Brilliance. This is Sherlock, he is our mascot. And this is the red level of Footsteps to Brilliance. And this is ideal for the toddler level, especially those toddlers learning to write letters. And of course, drawing pictures for fun with infants. Notice the bookshelves have three shelves. There's a library, there's a game shelf. And today we're going to go down to the third shelf, the writing shelf. Here are our doodle pad and our tracing letters. I'm gonna open up our doodle pad. And here you can see there are some pictures I've already drawn in my doodle pad. Today, I'm going to open up a new doodle pad and we do get a prompt at the top with the speaker button. Draw a picture or practice writing letters and numbers. And you can see we have crayons with uh, different colors, different tips. I'm gonna use the big tip today and I am going to draw some. orange.
and you can Green. ask the children, what do you think I'm drawing? And I'm going to go ahead and color Orange. The I am drawing a pumpkin. So when you are working with your toddler, you can definitely be the one to use the doodle pad and draw the picture. And of course, they can just scribble. It's so much fun at three years old or two years old to just grab a crayon, as you know, and scribble. They can do the same thing on our doodle pad. We have a big eraser here. So if you click on the eraser, you can erase quickly. I like to use the big tip to do that so that it will erase very quickly. And again, as a toddler, you can hold them on your lap and you can let them take their finger to the screen Green. and have fun scribbling. Children love to do this. There's something about seeing that beautiful shade of color on the screen. Now, when they are done with their picture or you're done with yours, we have a white check mark. Simply click the check mark. This allows you to either go back to edit your picture. You may print your picture by clicking the print button. And of course, what's more fun than putting a picture up on the refrigerator? Or you can email your picture, perhaps to a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle, or even an older brother or sister. So this gives you that ability to do that with our program. Now, one of the other things I do wanna show you is when you do save your work and you go out of it for the day, your work is saved in your own little doodle pad library. So there's what I did today and it will be there until I choose to take it off. Now, while we're here on our Footsteps to Brilliance app, for your older children that are beginning to form their letters, you'll notice we have our Better Big Letter Tracing. And this is the perfect opportunity for children that are learning the letters of the alphabet or even the first thing that they learn their name. They can click on a letter. Today I'll do my name. And here's my J. This is the capital letter J. Connect the dots in order to write the capital letter J. And I've got my little dots to help me learn the stroke of the letter and I'm going to get three chances to practice it. So this is the perfect way to not only provide that support, but again, as our children get older, this is going to help them be reminded of the direction of the letter and how to make those letters appropriately. Now we also, beside having our capital letters, if you click the red triangle, we also have the lowercase. So have fun with your children, especially your infants, by putting them on your lap. Open up the doodle pad and enjoy uh, drawing and scribbling. And for the older students, say your uh, children that are going to be maybe preschoolers and TK, help them by learning the shape and the formation of their letter. All right, our next section that we're going to work on is going to be our preschoolers and our TK. These will be our three to five-year-olds. At or around age three, children begin to replicate things they see in print. Wavy lines represent letter formations. And of course, you can always ask your child to name the letters that he made with the wavy lines. And they will actually tell you by looking at their wavy lines, the words that they believe they've written. At or around age four, children begin to recognize the letters in their name and they can begin to name and write some of these letters. So it's important now that we begin to use things that are appropriate for this age level. Drawing pictures at this stage also is fun and they'll usually use shapes such as stick figures with round circles and lines for body parts. Let's take a look now at how Footsteps to Brilliance supports writing for the pre-K child. On our CKU pre-reader app, this is the perfect place to support this. Each week in Clever Kids University pre-reader, your child will read a nursery rhyme, and then on day one, we'll practice tracing the letters to learn the proper way to form them, and on day five, they will have an opportunity to draw a response to a prompt. 
This early form of writing not only encourages creativity because they're drawing, but it enables the children to talk and write about their picture. Let's take a look at CKU's app. I'm now on our CKU pre-reader. And as you see, I happen to be on week five of my adventure through the alphabet. Now, as a parent, each week your children are going to get a different nursery rhyme and different activities. Let's open up week five. Here you see there's a day one, it's an alphabet letter day. And that is, of course, where the children will be exposed to the letter they're working with. Our day number two is going to be a math day. Our day three is a science day. Our day four is going to be a reading and book day. And our day five is our writing day. So what I'd like to show you are two different things that your children will have under the heading of writing each week. So I'm going to open up our day one. And on day one, they will read their nursery rhyme. In this particular week, it's Hey Diddle Diddle. And you'll notice they're on the letter E. So they are going to be tracing the letter E. This is the capital letter E. Connect the dots in order to write the capital letter E. And we did explore this on our red level of Footsteps to Brilliance. And this is the same um, format where they go by the dots. capital letter E. You are a star. And they're going to get three opportunities. And again, each week they will get a nursery rhyme and a tracing. They will also get the opportunity to freehand. Practice writing this letter. Write this letter as many times as you can. So e. again, using the doodle pad, they'll be able to practice and do that without the scaffolds. The fourth activity on this day is a sound recognition for the letter. So again, on your first day of the week, they're reading and they're getting two different writing activities with activity two and three. Now, when we fast forward up to day five during the week, this is where you'll notice they reread their nursery rhyme. They have an activity two, which is to talk to an adult. And this is great for oral language. Talk to a grown-up about the question below. Then, record yourself answering the question. And here we have the prompt. In this story, there are three animals. A cat, a cow, and a dog. What is your favorite animal? So this is an oral prompt to help them think about something that they're about to write and draw to. And the oral prompt is, what is your favorite animal? And I love this for our young learners because it gets them to think. It's helping them learn to state an opinion. So once they've done this oral language activity, they can draw or write to a prompt with activity number three. Draw a picture of your favorite animal. And here, not only are they done explaining their favorite animal, now they have the opportunity to draw it. And you saw on my earlier slide, I drew my favorite animal, a tiger. So children should have fun and enjoy not only talking in our program, but they can have fun drawing and writing about this. And again, this is our doodle pad format, and it is in our CKU pre-reader. Right. So let's watch now how a parent actually supports their young learner with one of these writing activities in Clever Kids University Pre-Reader. Yeah. 
Here you notice that the child was having some difficulty doing the tracing and the caregiver has taken his finger and helped him complete the activity. So this is what we mean by sit with your children, encourage them, support them. Our apps do that as well. They will tell you, try again, so close, but it's so wonderful to work in tandem with your child and help them to feel successful. Let's watch another example of supporting a child that's learning how to write letters. Are you sure? No. Okay, you go for it. I'm so proud of you. Good job, you did a letter A. I love this because the little girl looks so excited that she made her letter A and the caregiver was so excited as well. And this is such a wonderful time to work with your children on something quality and literacy based. So again, these two examples show how to use the CKU pre-reader to support our early learners. Let's take a look at some writing samples that came from these pre-reader app examples. Okay, so these are authentic pre-K writing samples and you can see the prompts underneath the samples such as uh, responding to an I can feel better prompt, my favorite song, my favorite color, I can be helpful. And you see a variety of prompts that are picture-based, letter-based, and we'll even see sometimes some very budding young artists, such as the prompt with When I Grow Up. Now, a parent may have helped the child with this, and that's perfectly fine, and it's so much fun for both the parent and the child to work together. So again, these are real student examples of preschoolers that use the CKU pre-reader app. All right, our next section is going to focus on our kindergartners, our five to six-year-olds. So by age five to six, our children now know how to hold their tools, such as their pencil or their crayon, and they have definitely shown their dominant hand. They can form their letters correctly. Now, most of the time they know their letters and they know the sounds of their letters, and sometimes when they begin to write, they do now mix their upper and lower case. And you can see some of this on the example for the first one on our page, but they are able to get a complete thought out. They may miss some of the words in that sentence, but at this age, we are still encouraging our children to write a simple thought that goes with their pictures. And again, by first grade, this writing does become more developed and our sentences begin to convey a complete thought or an idea. Now in Clever Kids University, this is the I Can Read app. This app focuses on early literacy skills once the children are able to decode simple words such as man and fan and can and tan. This app will build foundational reading and writing skills for kindergarten children. Each day of the week, it is dedicated to a different literacy skill. And on day four, children build a decodable book, they read it and they write to a prompt about it. Let's take a look at the CKU I Can Read app. Here on my screenshot, you will notice the prompt and you will notice the picture. Let's take a look at this in real time. This is the CKU I Can Read app. This is a weekly activity-based app that focuses on literacy skills. Today, I happen to be in week number eight, and you'll notice the pulsing arrow indicating the week I'm on. When I click on this week, it will open up my five daily activities. Each day of the week, you have an activity set of 
skills that are based on either learning the letters to decode a word or building sight words or working with actually reading and writing. I'm going to skip over to our day four today to show you how we move from reading to writing on this app. On our day number four, activity number four, you'll notice we are going to read our decodable book. So I'm going to click on activity four of our day four. It's time to read a book. Press the green arrow to get started. So here we have a chance to orally work with our microphone and read the decodable text and move through the book. Once we've done that and we have practiced reading, it's time to connect what we've read to a prompt. Activity number five is the write about it activity. Let's take a look. So here we have our screen that gives us the chance to write to our prompt. Today's prompt is, What do you like to eat at a picnic? Draw a picture and write about it. And we even have a little sentence stem, I like the, where we can write our own. So we click in our white box. Here's that little text box. I'm going to use the larger font. So I'm going to hit the T and I'm going to type my sentence. I like to eat a burger on a picnic. Now, if I want to change something, I could certainly go backward and use my delete button. And maybe I want to say, I like to eat a burger at a picnic. We also have highlighting. So if you wanted to highlight the food you're going to eat at the picnic, we can shade it in, click on the highlighting button, and maybe I want to highlight that in yellow. And there I've highlighted what I want to eat. I press save and there's my sentence. Now I can go down to my crayons and I can go ahead and draw what I'd like to eat at a picnic. So see if you can guess what this is going to be. So we have a lot of fun not only writing, but here we can connect with a picture. So I like to have a burger at a picnic. Now, when you're working with your children, they can draw their picture first, and you can provide support and help with the typing. Depends on the age of the child. So here's my burger that I like to eat at a picnic. And of course, I can add all kinds of things, such as some lettuce. Maybe I'd like to add some lettuce on my burger. So here I'm going to add some lettuce. And I can add cheese using yellow. I can make tomato. So maybe I'd like some cheese on my burger. So let's put some cheese and let's end up putting our tomato because that's my favorite is the tomato. So let's find the red crayon. Here it is. And I'm going to add my slice of tomato right above my cheese. And there we have it. So there's my prompt. What do you like to eat at a picnic? And there's the picture and the sentence including learning how to use the tools such as our highlighter. And if you want to do fonts in a different color, maybe the word picnic, here are the fonts. And maybe I want that in red. So here is how to really feel good about your writing, feel good about your work. Remember, we save it with the white check mark and we can go back and edit it. We can print it, we can email it. How much fun is that going to be? Your children will love this and so will you, especially when you see them progress as they're moving through I Can Read. Okay, let's look at a real example now of a child doing a CKU I Can Read prompt. Tap on there and let's read it. Got hurt. What do you think will help him feel better? Draw a picture and write about it. Hmm? A doctor. Go to a doctor. So first his face. Face. Okay. And then his eyes. eyes. Okay. And his mouth. 
<laughs> Look, he needs a hat. hat. Needs a hat. So what should we write about the doctor? Okay, you can do the doctor. Say, d d. Doc, doc, doc. What's doc? D d d. There it is. I love the way the parent here is helping the child sound the words out. The child is having a chance to elaborate on his sentences and think about some of the things he wants to say. This is the perfect place for this age group to begin to think about not only their complete thoughts, but to begin some word processing as well. Again, when working with children, remember, keep it positive, this is not a test. They're not being graded. Keep it fun because if they love having the fun of doing this, they'll be encouraged to do it more often. Take it slow because sometimes you've got to break a day up into really two days. They may have read the book on one of the days, but they may need to come back to the writing and the drawing on the next day. We have found that with this age group, it's sometimes better to do shorter spurts of time than a long session that wears them out. All right, our final section today will be dedicated to our first, second, and third graders, our seven to nine-year-olds. So by first, second, and third grade, children can now sound out and spell words correctly. They can write more complete and complex sentences. They have been exposed to different types of writing genres, such as the narrative, fiction, and informational. Additionally, children are now able to compose a piece of writing using the writing process. They've learned to plan what they want to say. They make their draft. They know they need to come back and fix spelling and do revisions. Sometimes they forget punctuation. Ultimately, when their writing is complete, they can publish or print their writing. Children are also becoming more familiar now with typing and using keyboarding. So at this time, for our children that are certainly first, second, and third grade, we encourage them to learn how to use their skill at the word processing. Many of our children are using their tablets, their um, computers, their laptops. So again, we notice that our children are starting to keyboard much earlier. Let's take a look at how our Footsteps to Brilliance app works with our book units. Okay, so Footsteps to Brilliance helps children at this stage by providing a simplified digital writing tool that is easy to use and allows the children to create beautiful books that they will be able to share and read over and over again. Reading is the starting point for writing. Children read a book to learn about the topic and learn the vocabulary. In the blue Footsteps to Brilliance app, our first, second, and third grade children will complete the stars or activities for each book in order to prepare for writing a story. The book units move children along the path of reading the book to learn about the topic then moving on to show their understanding in book buddies, that's comprehension, or the quiz games in the blue level. Next, students apply their knowledge with hands-on activities in skill building games and activities. And finally, they create a book in create a book or journal. Let's take a tour now of a book unit and see how to help students use create a book and journal writing tools. Today, we're gonna to look at each level, the red, the yellow, and the blue, and see a brief demo for how to use Create a Book. Let's begin. Let's jump back into our Footsteps to Brilliance School Edition app. This is the place where we can work with our children that are now beginning to write, and these are going to be perfect for our first, second, and third grade students. So we're going to switch over to Footsteps to Brilliance now. This is the red level. And just note that at this red level, you'll notice we have a section for library, a section for games, and down at the bottom, a section for writing. With each of our books, 
you will find that we have a plan of how to get through a book. So for example, here is just the right pet. First, we read our book because we read to learn. We answer questions to make sure we've comprehended. We play some skill games to make sure we know some of the skills that we are working on in this grade level. And we have our create a book. Each of the levels that has a set of books also gives the student an opportunity to create their own book. Let's take a look at some of the different choices that children will have. Again, this is the red level. We have some fiction books in this library. In our yellow level, we have our alphabet animal series. Here's Allie the alligator. Again, you'll notice those stars, the pink for read the book, book buddies, the games, and create a book. I'm going to click on create a book. Now, what you see when I click on create a book is my library of the books I've written that goes with Allie the alligator. I've written several of them now. Today, I'm going to do another book. I'm going to click on the new book. This is the template book. And here we build our book starting with the cover. Let's start with a title. I'll click on create a book and I'm going to call this book Alligator Facts. Next, I'm going to choose a background and I think I'll use this one. The children love this because they feel that they are really an author and an artist and they can color, they can draw, they can use our art from our program. Here are the characters and I'm going to put an alligator. I'm going to move him down on the log. Now you'll notice the alligator is pointing to the right. If I want to turn my alligator about face, I have a tool here to the left, this double green arrow, and I can turn him to the left or the right. I also can rotate him and now he's laying on his back, okay? And if I want to add another picture, maybe I want to add this to it, I can size it down. Now, notice right now, this crane is in front of my alligator. If I want him to go behind, I have the two colors, red or blue, for going behind or going in front. Now, by clicking it, the crane has gone partially behind. You can see here's the alligator in front, and here's our crane in the back of our alligator. Now, if I want this crane to now come in front, I can click the blue, and here our crane has come in the front. If I don't want the crane, I can simply remove it. Now over to the right, you'll notice we have a plus sign. This is going to turn the pages and start our book. Before we leave the cover of our book, notice it is going to have the name of who is the person writing it. It is going to have the date that the person wrote this book. So I'm going to click on my white plus, and now I can add a new background. I can add a new picture and I can click and I can write a sentence. And maybe I wanna say, alligators live in the swamp, okay? Again, we save our books by clicking each page. And when we are all finished and wanna see what we've done, we can see the little magnifying glass. It will lay out all the pages I've written. Here's my cover, here's page one. If I wrote a page two or three or four, I would see all of my pages. I can also arrange my pages by using the arrange buttons and move page one to two or three and so forth. Again, have fun working with your children, watching them grow, watching them write, watching them become authors and publishers. They will love this. Again, we save our book with the white check mark. And again, this can be edited for another time. Maybe I wanna add a new page to my book. It'll bring my book up. I can go ahead and add another page. And maybe today I want to write another fact. Alligators are reptiles, okay? And I save that fact. I can put in a background and put in a character. And let's put an alligator in here. 
because I wrote my fact. And again, I can see now that I have a new page added. If I want this to be the first page of my book, I click, notice I can move it, and now it is the first page. So that is as simple as it is. Remember, save it. You can print it. You can email it. All right, so that is our yellow level. Let's take a look at the blue level, and this would be perfect for second and third grade writing. We have library books that include the life science books. These are a variety of wonderful animal books. We've also got science books. We've got fables. So here you can choose a book that you might like to write your version of the fable. I'm going to click on the ants and the grasshopper. And you'll notice I'm going to go through the book. These books are much more sophisticated. When I get to the end of my book, instead of having stars, I have the section for the quiz games. This will give us comprehension questions. It'll be skill games. I have crossword puzzles. When I click the little blue uh, arrow, here is my journal, my writing book. And this will look similar to what I just showed you, but it's a little more sophisticated for second and third grade. So again, you've got your backgrounds, and we have lots of different backgrounds to choose from. Choose a background, choose your characters, and there'll be different characters from the different stories. So you can look and see when you find the character that goes with what you want. And there are plenty to choose from. So I might choose this one because I was working with the ants and the grasshopper. And you can change them by rotating and you can add and do the layers. And again, have fun setting up your book, use your plus sign. And again, simply now you've got your drawing and pictures to the left, your large writing surface to the right. So we can put in our background and notice this background fills up my whole page now. And when you go over to the writing section, you have quite a bit more that you can write. Again, this is for children now that are going through the writing process. They're learning how to plan their book. They're learning how to make their draft. They're learning how to revise, edit, and ultimately, when they're all finished and they save their book, they are ready to print and publish. So this, I hope, is a great way for you to know that our program spans from our earliest learners all the way to our third graders. And this is a great opportunity, not only for your children to write, but you can write, you can print, you can email, you can watch their writing as it progresses. Because remember, all of the writing is stamped with the date. Okay, hey, so here are some examples of books written by first graders using Create a Book. You'll notice on these examples of this story from Wendy the Whale, children are beginning to use full sentences to describe their ideas. There is punctuation, there's grammar, and spelling begins to be correct. And again, one of the important text features will be that the pictures match the ideas on their pages. Here's a second grade example. You'll notice now longer sentences that describe the ideas. They have started on page one with an opening sentence. Let me tell you about iguanas. Iguanas are the largest lizards in America. They've added now paragraphs for pages two, three, four, five, and they've made a concluding page number six. In conclusion, this is why I find iguanas interesting. So not only are they thinking about their writing, they're following the standards for a second or third grade writing sample. Again, punctuation, grammar, and spelling is correct, and pictures match what is on the written page. Now for our third grade writing sample, notice that you see here the child was writing about amphibians. They did use in our tools, they use the arrows, to show the cycle from the egg to the tadpole to the frog. And notice that's that left side with the full picture and the right side has plenty of room to write their multiple paragraphs. By this age, the students are showing they understand the topic. They're writing more complex sentences and ideas. They're using the vocabulary learned from the book 
And of course, their punctuation, grammar, and spelling is correct. Now for the final section of this video, let's talk about some tips. And here are some to get you on your way. Set a routine for daily use. It is important to find a time each day that works for you and your child to learn on our app. Picking the same time each day will help them get into a routine. It's just like brushing their teeth or practicing the piano. Working in short 15 to 20 minute sessions will strengthen your child's literacy skills. Just like a strong, beautiful house is built by laying one brick at a time. Each day spent learning on the app is building them into a stronger reader and writer. Now, more than ever, you as the parent are becoming the co-teacher with your children's classroom teacher. As you work with your child, remember, provide a positive reinforcement as they learn. If your child makes a mistake or doesn't get it right, don't worry. Making mistakes is an important part of learning. When your child gets stuck, statements like, that was a good try, let's try again, or I know you can figure this out, I'm here to help, are statements that will reassure them when difficulties arise. The Footsteps to Brilliance app is designed to provide immediate positive feedback, letting your child know if they get the answer correct or not, and they get an opportunity to try again. This immediate feedback helps children monitor, correct a mistake, and learn from their mistakes. If your child is stuck, it's okay to help them. Try to guide them to the right answer without giving them the answer. They'll learn more discovering the answer on their own. And be sure to celebrate with your child statements such as, congratulations, I knew you could do it, or you worked hard to figure that out will help to build your child's confidence in their own abilities. Well, just so you know, help is here for you. If you have any questions or need help with our app, you can get your questions answered from our Bilingual Parent University. This is found at www.help.myf2b.com or you can send an email to support at footsteps to brilliance.com. And remember, we're here to support you and to be your partners working with your children. This is your next step. Get registered and watch for your welcome email so that you will have everything you need to get started. We are proud to be your partner in helping your child become a reading writing champion. This is the address to go to to register, myf2b.com slash register. Here you will put in some information, create your parent account, link your children to your account, and you will be up and ready to support your children. Well, we hope that this presentation on helping your children launch his or her writing skills will be helpful. Come back again and see us soon. A few final thoughts before we finish. Have your child use the Footsteps to Brilliance program for at least 15 minutes per day so their learning will continue whenever and wherever they are. Talk with your child as you read books together, ask questions about what they're reading, touch on words so they can hear those words, go to the parent registration link if you haven't already done so to get your parent username and password. Sign your additional children up who may not yet have accounts from their school. Remember, we begin as young as infants to third grade and use the program and have fun. See you again soon at our next workshop.